Um, okay, so I'm Sam Stanislaus and I'm a track and field coach based in the northeast of England. I do CrossFit as well um, and I used to be an athlete myself and a couple of years ago I decided that I was sick of CrossFitters moaning about running and I was going to do something to help them and kind of develop track days which is working with CrossFit and now other sports and just trying to help people understand about running a little bit better and stop them getting injured when they try to run. And we'll go into a little bit of that um, in a short while. That is perfect. And that's been like the most common question throughout the whole of lockdown is, I'm trying to get into my running, but dot, dot, dot. And then um, two weeks ago, we had a guy come on to do a working on breath work whilst working out. And um, all the questions were like, okay, that's all well and good, but how do I breathe and run at the same time? <laughs> so I was like, right, we need to get a running coach on ASAP. Brill, okay, Nat, you go ahead and go for you. So I think I've met quite a lot of you, I'm Nat, um, and I am often found in the, in the little room um, treating people. So I'm a sports therapist. Um, also do some, some classes at the gym as well. Um, when I can make it. Um, so yeah, any kind of um, postural issues, pain issues, injuries, um, any rehab, um, I'm, I'm here to help out. I'm just gonna talk a little bit today about um, stretching and mobility and um, how you can reverse some of the, the issues that you've maybe encountered in lockdown. Real awesome. I think everyone's, I'm definitely coming out of lockdown, like with a little bit of a hunched shoulder, which I absolutely I hate, <laughs> um, but I've spent all day, every day at a computer. So yeah, you know, I really need to kind of counterbalance that now and start working on bringing it back so that I can pick up a barbell and not just one weight. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a shock to the system for all of us when we go back after this one. It's been a, it's been a long slog, hasn't it, for everyone? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Brill. Okay, so I'm going to um, hand the mic over now to Sam. He's going to go ahead and um, chat for about 15 minutes. And um, Nat and I are going to mute ourselves. And so, Sam, off, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so, like I said before, um, I'm a track and field coach predominantly. Uh, that's how I started out um, with this kind of track days movement that I've been trying to create the last couple of years. Um, so my history as an athlete was, I was a jumper, um, did triple jump and high jump. And as a coach, I started working with multi-eventers, so heptathlon and decathlon. So they're, they're probably in the sporting world, the sporting world as we know, the closest things to kind of CrossFitters because they have to cover a multiple amount of events over a period of two days. So although they know their challenge, which is different to CrossFit, it does vary and there's a lot of different training that was required. And one of the issues I had was I was getting these pretty talented athletes who could run and jump and throw. Well, they could run short distance, jump and throw, but they've also got to be fit enough to run over and over and over again, run down a runway, run 200 meters, 800 meters, 1500 meters. And um, in the early years, I just focused on the cool events and we got really good at hurdles and high jump and long jump, and things like that. But then I realized that they needed to be fitter. They needed to be better at running, but they were young athletes and they had a limited amount of time to actually be able to build that aerobic capacity to give them a good running. I mean, a couple of them were lucky. Some people are born with a third lung or so. I don't know what it is, but they just can just run and run and run. But some of them don't. And I had to research and it took me a long time to find the most kind of efficient and effective ways to get better at running. One with minimal time and two, sounds lazy, but minimal effort. They had to be able to do these running sessions in between everything else that they were doing. Um, and still stay fit for everything else. And I think that's why my experience transfers well to CrossFit because you still need to lift heavy and you need to do burpees and you need to swing from a rig and everything else and you need to be able to run. You can't stop doing all them to get better at running because then you go back and trust me, it, it's a nightmare. I did in lockdown too, I just ran. I was like, right, I'm going to get really good at running. 
I did. I got good at running, didn't do anything else. And then I had to get better at everything else and I stopped running. It was just this balancing act. Um, so based on my experience and my coaching and my training myself, I've been trying to put together kind of these talks and packages to be able to help people understand what they're trying to do when they go running and what they're trying to avoid and what the things are that they should really be making sure they do all the time and the things that aren't so important. Um, and that's what we're going to go through today. So I've called it an overview on building aerobic capacity through running. Um, and that's basically what it is. Um, it's a lot to talk about in a short period of time. So I'll try and keep it as simple as I can. And I think the three main points, if you want to improve at running is you've got to be consistent, you've got to be efficient, and mindset is super important. Um, and we'll come on to that as we go through it. I did, um, I've got a little bit of a background in psychology. And I would say a lot of the time, my, psych my psychology work, my athletes actually has an equal impact to the technical work I do with my athletes. It gets to that point where if you have your mindset right and a slightly worse kind of ability, talent level technique, you can overcome it. Whereas if you have a poor mindset and all the technique in the world and all the talent in the world, we're just going to hit, like, we're not going to be able to work through that. And that's one thing, like, no matter how much kind of I tell you, you've got to have the right mindset to be able to go and do these things. I'm sure it'll come up when um, Matt talks about kind of um, yeah, th the therapy side in that people get injured, but who's going to do the rehab? Who's prepared to actually do the rehab and the boring stuff and the little bits and bobs day in, day out? And I think it's the same with running. So to kick things off, I'm going to talk a little bit about the main issues I've seen CrossFit athletes and other sports footballers and rugby players and netballers encounter with running. The first thing, like um, Sir said before, was people say, I really want to get better running, but I really want to try doing some running, but and there's always that problem. And I think one of the main ones is pain and injury. And I think a lot of people say, oh, well, I do want to go out for runs, but my shins will hurt. And it's like, to be honest, yeah, your shins might hurt. If you haven't run for a long time and you put on your old running trainers that you haven't worn for a long time and you go and run on the roads, you are going to hurt your shins. Your shins will hurt because they're going to hit a solid ground repeatedly. And what always baffles me, and because, like I said, the athletes I coach, it's kind of short distance, and I was a shorter, more explosive athlete, is people don't ease their way into running. I see it every time we go into lockdown. People go out and run 10K, and it's like, it baffles me. Like, And I've done it. We've all made the mistakes. I'm not saying I'm, I'm perfect, but because I'm maybe a little bit lazy, I'll go out and I'll run for 10 minutes. And the next day I might run for a little bit longer. And so my athletes at the start of winter, Lucy's running the, around the track doing one mile on a Tuesday. She's not starting off with a 10K run. And I think if I went out and I ran 10K in my old trainers on the roads, I would be in agony. And that is the thing. So if any of you have experienced that, honestly, like that is normal, but it's not the running that is causing it. It's the choice of footwear, maybe the choice of surface or the, just the choice of distance that you're doing. So I think that's one of the main things I always try and get in people's minds is it's not necessarily the running that is causing the injury. It's the choices you're making surrounding that running. And I think for me, everything has to start with often and small small and often sorry it's a little bit the same with eating healthy and building up anything in gymnastics or other crossfit movements and lifting like if you've just walked into the gym and you want to do get better at clean and jerks you wouldn't do great you wouldn't do 30 clean and jerks a time at 60 kilos at the rx weight you would learn the technique and you would build it up slowly and you would maybe do your first attempt at 30 kilos then a few weeks later you would practice you'd go again but people will go out and they run a 5K as fast as they can. And then two days later or three days later, they want to run another 5K or another 5K. And they want to constantly better that 5K time. And like my message, I guess, is just kind of, you've got to concentrate on you. You've got to dial it back. And you've got to think, what do I want to get out of running? And what do I want to get out of each run that I do? And I think that's the next point for me is poor performance. I think. Is it Sarah, not Sarah? 
but <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, and oh yeah, uh, so basically, I'm just reading the chat at the same time. Um, so yeah, poor performance is one of the things that stops people wanting to go out and run. Um, I think I did it myself not long ago. I entered a challenge with the gym and it was to cover 40k in two weeks running or walking. And my first run was five minutes down on my 5k PB. And for a split second, I was on Strava and I wasn't going to save that run. And I was going to just sack that off. That's not good. It's not reflective of me. But on that day, I was tired. I'd lifted the day before. And it was snow, there was snow on the ground. I was kind of shuffling along. And I think that poor performance in the short term, I was like, okay, no more running for me. And you have all this kind of, all these negative thoughts. And I think it really is focused on running as opposed to other things. Um, I think when I went back to the gym and started lifting, I was like, oh, well, I haven't touched a barbell in ages. It will take me a while. And I was very patient with getting back to lifting. But running, it's almost like you expect it like that. It doesn't always happen. So that's when I always say about being consistent and setting yourself those little targets and maybe go out for a 10 minute run or even start really simple. I love intervals. So run for 30 seconds, walk for 30 seconds, do that 10 times. Then the next day, run for a minute, walk for a minute, do that 10 times. And or the next session, not the next day. Or go on a grass field, a dry one, obviously. It's been hard lately. And run on the grass and just run the length of a football pitch. Walk back, take your time walking back, then run it again. Time your runs, that's fine. But do, focus more on the feeling of the running, how your body feels. And if you need to rest a little bit longer, rest a little bit longer and listen to your body. I think that's one thing I've discovered with my athletes is sometimes they can smash themselves. They can go really hard on a session but then they can't recover and they can't do the next session properly. So we've always put in these little targets and sometimes it's time based. Other times it's just your feeling. And I'll say, if you can't catch your breath, take an extra 30 seconds and wait. And if you can't hold your form and you're rocking and rolling and your head's going, trip it back. Take, take the speed out, take the intensity out and just kind of think about the form all the time. So, I think one of the main things to take away from what I'm talking about today is kind of everyone's on their own journey and you can't compare yourself to anybody else in that running journey. And you also can't always compare yourself to what you've done previously. You need to just tick it off session after session after session, be consistent, keep turning up. Don't be afraid to change it. You could, the other day, I really wanted to go for a PB mile. And in my head, I've been building it up all week. And you know what happened? I just didn't feel great that day. I, w I wasn't ready to run that mile. So what I did instead was I went out for an easy recovery run. It wasn't actually easy because I live on a hill, so it's never easy. But I did an easier recovery run, 20 minutes. And then two days later, I went out and I PB my mile. And I think that's where we've got to be a little bit more flexible with running is because sometimes how you're feeling in yourself, if I've sat in a chair all day and I go out for a run, it won't, it won't be a good run. It won't be my fastest run. So I have to change my expectation of that run. And I think a lot of people don't do that with running. And for me, we wouldn't do that in any other aspect of fitness. We wouldn't expect to PB our back squat every single week. We wouldn't expect to get double unders I mean it took me ages to get double unders it takes a lot of people ages. even single unders takes people time but people expect to just go out and run and be great at it straight away or be better at it every time they do it it takes time it takes consistency and it takes that persi uh, persistence so moving on from there one of the things I'm going to use CrossFit as an example I know people do other sports I, I know quite a few different sports but People kind of say, it's all right, running is important, but it's not that important. I can kind of, I'll just row instead, or I'll ski instead, or I'll do something else instead. But actually, the benefits of running are so good for recovery. And also a little bit, I think for my athletes, it's really good for their alignment and to let their body kind of shake out. We call a lot of our runs that we do shake out runs. 
And if you have a hard CrossFit session or a hit session or something else, the next day going out for that run or a walk or whatever, it lets the body kind of get all the tension out and gets the body moving again how it's supposed to. So we do a lot of our runs are just recovery runs where you don't put a clock on, you don't put Strava on, you don't measure it, you go off feel and you just go out and you let the body run and you run relaxed. And by doing that, you're still getting the volume in, you're still running, but you're doing it kind of at that lower intensity. And a lot of people do that on the bike, the row and the ski. People go on the bike for ages at my gym, they're just sat there and cruising. Uh, but people don't do that with running. They pound themselves and they make it really difficult for themselves. Um, so I think looking at the CrossFit Games athletes last year, 2020, I've made a note earlier. The top five that made it, Tia Toomey, 800-meter runner back in the day, a phenomenal runner. You've got Hayley Adams. Her mile time is five, sub five minutes or around five minutes, which is phenomenal. She's 19, 20. Then you've got Carrie Pierce. She smashes workouts like Murph, Atlanta, the cut, anything with running. Catherine, phenomenal runner, was a track athlete. And Brooke Wells was a 400 meter sprinter. So those five women were all at some point runners. They're track athletes. And they might not do as much of it now. But like I said before, that mindset of like, okay, this will hurt, but it's not going to hurt me too much. I think that's the really important thing. You see that with Tia. You see that with a lot of the female CrossFitters at the moment that, there's not a fear with running. I think a lot of people, and especially in UK CrossFit and a lot of gyms that I see, they have that fear of running. So you've got to figure out how to break that fear. How are you going to manage it? How are you going to cope with it? Are you going to run for five minutes? If You, you could be a good runner who's struggling to improve. And in that case, I think I've sent over um, a copy of a 5K running program that I've put together. And it's got quite a lot of volume on it, but you could say to yourself, I'm going to do two of those sessions a week for four weeks. If you're a little bit better at running, do three or four of those sessions. And each one has a different purpose. You don't see one saying four miles as fast as you can, five miles as fast as you can. We have easy runs, steady runs, long runs, tempo runs. You have variable distances. You have variable gradients. So uphill, downhill on grass, on road, and you've got to kind of embrace each one of them and kind of focus a little bit on what you want to get out of each session. So if it says easy run, three miles, do an easy run for three miles. You don't need to lash it, just go steady away, three miles. If it's 10 hill runs, that's it. That's a different challenge. And it's just trying to embrace each challenge like you would in CrossFit. you got to do 100 burpees for time. Nobody wants to do 100 burpees for time. But you break it up, you maybe do two sets of 50 or 10 sets of 10 or whatever. And I think it's just trying to switch that mindset with running to it doesn't have to be so hard. It doesn't have to be this like such big challenge and this big thing to fear. Make it comfortable for you. And I think try and strip it back and manageable and then be consistent with it. If you run once a month for 12 months, that's only 12 sessions a year, you aren't going to get any better you are going to probably hurt yourself each time you run. But if you start small and you do one session a week for four weeks and two sessions a week and build it up, it won't be such a fearful thing, I think. Um, so, yeah, just to sum up, I think consistency, efficiency, and mindset. And in my mind, I really think mindset is overlooked when it comes to running. There's lots of stuff out there, loads of different programs, um, through lockdown, everyone's been thrown out these five get better over 5k or whatever. But a lot of the time, they're missing out that real key aspect, which is your mindset. It's how you approach it, what you say to yourself in your head when you're running, and then how you deal with it after. Like, don't try and delete your Strava like I did. Don't do anything like that. Just rationalize it and think running doesn't have to be this big, scary, fearful thing. But um, hopefully that's covered everything. I tried to be as quick as I can and cover as much as I can without going over. No, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And um, I'll just give you a chance to um, grab a drink if you need to, Sam. But yeah. yeah, that was awesome. And we've got a couple of questions. The thing I took the most from that is that I, I know what I do is I always think, well, I'm a human. We're naturally meant to run. So why aren't I a good runner? And natural fact, what you've said there is like, why are we not approaching running like we approach CrossFit in terms of this is a hardcore movement for our body, you know, pounding pavement. 
And why should I just go from zero to hero? You know, that there is no reason, you know, if I ran ever since the day I was born, then yeah, maybe I should be able to have that expectation of myself. But maybe we should approach running with, you know, like we approach CrossFit varied, you know, the human body is supposed to be able to squat. And yet 95% of people that enter the gym door can't squat. And then we have to take them on a journey of squat therapy from little squat to like squatting to a med ball to squatting low, then getting your chest up, you know, all these things. And we should totally be doing that with running. That's never, ever entered my mind. And I love that. Thank you. We've got some great um, comments here about people that are, you know, like Joanna, I'm on my final week of couch to 5k and finding it massively mind over matter. And I was the exact same. I remember like going on 400 meter runs at the gym and then just every pound of my foot, I'd be like, I hate running. I hate yeah, running. I hate I running. Yeah, yeah. Got- and then one day I just, that I like suddenly, I think I was pissed off with Gary or something. So then I would, every footstep I was going, I hate Gary, I hate Gary. <laughs> and for some reason, it just completely um, changed my running. Like I suddenly started in like finding a tempo, you know, and um, I don't love it, but it changed, changed it for me, you know. So um, let's go ahead and quickly answer. We've got three questions, so let's call it at that and then let Sam go. So um, the first one is from Tash. I hope you don't mind me saying that, Tash. When I'm running, my calves feel that like they are in cramp. Any tips? Yeah, so I think one big thing I didn't mention, which was on my notes, was warming up. Um, I see so often people in the gym, especially, will prepare, they'll get the barbell out, they'll work with barbell they get on the rig they make sure everything's ready but not one person does a run before they go running or they don't prepare to go and do the running i do it all the time with double unders and skipping i don't stretch my calves and then wonder why my calves are so sore um so it's not a magic answer but make sure you're preparing properly walking up on your toes doing some calf stretches making sure they're loose another thing that i see all the time is just the footwear Try out different footwear that you're wearing. If you're wearing CrossFit shoes, you're going to get them heavier contacts to running shoes. And there's no one size fits all. It's finding the shoes that work for you and potentially how you're planting your foot. I'd have to go into technique as well, but think about how you're running and how you're planting your foot. If it's out in front of you all the time, you're going to get a bigger impact and just even change how where you're running. Try running on grass build up the volume on grass or on a softer surface before you go onto the roads. But calves is a real common one. And sometimes, like, don't quote me on this, sometimes it just takes a little bit to build up the volume and to get the calves used to it. And like DOMS that we get in other things, you've just got to kind of figure out whether it is DOMS or it's a bit more serious. But hopefully those tips cover it. Yeah, brilliant. Love that. Um, Okay, the next question is... um, from Vic, I, I'll, I'll run for half a mile, then all I can think about is how heavy my legs feel. Can I do anything to help this physically or mentally? Yeah, I think then break it down, do intervals. This is one thing I always struggled with, that if I go out for a longer run, it feels like my legs just start feeling like they're filled with lead. So you need to stop, walk, then run. And as you walk, what happens is the blood starts flowing and your body starts recovering. So say break it down, do 400 meters and whatever time it took you to run the 400, walk the 400 and then your body's recovering, but you're still building up your running volume um, and build it up from there. I think it's a really common thing. Like my legs go heavy super quickly, but when I start doing interval work, I can get the running done. I just need to walk or go at a slower pace for a little bit, recover, then go again. Yeah, that's great. So again, another vote for interval intervals in your running. Don't just go straight for the mile like uh, like we do at the gym. <laughs> okay, um, the last question. This is from Steve. I run three, four times a week, pretty much the same distance speed each time. I'm not very inventive. Is that approach okay? Or I'm am I in danger of diminishing returns from the run? Should I be mixing it up? And thank you. Yeah, really good, uh, really good question. This is the mistake loads of people make is they'll just find a loop they like and they'll go out and do it every single time. And if you enjoy running and you're just running for fun, absolutely do that. Like no problem, just go out for your run, do the same run all the time. Some of my friends do it, but it infuriates me slightly. Cause I'm like, you could be so good. Like, why are you just going out and doing that 5K loop every day? Like 
you could be so good if you mix it up, do some speed work, do some over distance work. Um, but like I said, I've emailed over a program and on it, there's like 28 days. So there's about 20 different sessions and there's pace charts as well. So if it says three mile easy run, you can look at what your 5k time is and look at the pace you're supposed to be running, which I think loads of you will find really useful because a lot of the time, I think a lot of people run too fast. People go out at paces that don't match what their 5k PB is and you can't train at your race pace. So I've, I've got a few different charts. So on a 5k easy run, say your PB for 5k is 20 minutes, you're not going to run it in 20 minutes. So you need to know how fast you should run each kilometre. And as I say, these page charts, they do it for you. Um, so I don't know how you want to distribute them or email it out, but if you have a look through and send that out, I think in terms of motivation and different sessions, it'd be really useful. And also the page charts will be really useful for you to know whether you're running at an easy pace, a hard pace or whatever. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so yeah, Sam was really kind enough to share that, um, which is something that, um, normal people have to pay for, but you guys are special. And um, so you guys will get this um, this week as a link. And then all I ask is that this week, as you um, go out and start practicing it and take your amazing sweaty selfies, just give Sam's um, Instagram a tag um, that you've got your own personal running coach, which is at track underscore days with two Ys yeah. um, and an S, not a Z. Well done, Sam, for doing that. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just want to say a massive big thank you to Sam. He's actually heading off now to the track to go and do his magic um, to some other people. So, um, Sam, thank you so, so much for your time. Really appreciated it. And, um, yeah, thanks for your answering questions too. Yeah, th thank you for having me. It's been really good. I've enjoyed having the chance to talk to some more people about running. And if anyone has any more questions, like, if you want to take them and email them or if people want to just dm me on track days that's absolutely fine happy to answer anything awesome Great. so good brilliant so many people Great. saying thanks sam that was awesome appreciate the feedback um yes please to the running program i can't <laughs> believe i just said that yeah and it's just everything's brilliant that you've said so you can head off there sam thank just you our beautiful faces on the screen and i'll chat to you later yes thanks guys Today I'm talking about um, goal setting and mindset, okay, because this is such a common thing, especially when we hit a new season. So for example, our new season at the moment is, um, our new season will be coming up in April, which is getting back into the gym. Or for example, a new season is like January the 1st and everyone's got like, I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to grab these new goals, which is brilliant. I flipping love it. I love people that are motivated. You know me, hopefully. Um, I just love anyone that's enthusiastic. And so it's just showing that enthusiasm of like, I want to achieve something to me is just awesome. So I want to harness that and give you something that you, you can take forward okay so let's say we're going back into the gym you are a new member you're a new athlete you're just walking in for the first day ever typically what I see when people join the gym is they say I um I want to lose weight and I'm like okay great brilliant and that's actually probably about 95 percent of the people that start the gym is that they're going to want to lose weight which is brilliant it's a great goal if you need to lose weight in order to um you know live longer move around better then yeah you need to lose weight but i just wouldn't sit i just have from my experience of seeing probably over about 500 people saying that they want to lose weight um, I'd never really um, get to watch a really healthy journey. Um, and what usually happens is after a couple of months, that completely changes to I want to get strong because they start loving the movements that we do. And then a couple of months after that, they then they're like, oh, I want to lose weight again. And, then, and it's just becomes this like this bad cycle um, where we we kind of never it's start, we never stop to just enjoy ourselves or to start to love our bodies or just to enjoy the process of life because it's not going to be fun to go through let's say we're all going to live to 80 
and we're all like 30 now we're not gonna we don't want to live for 50 years of going I want to be this but I'm not I want to be this but I'm not I want to be this you know so what is the alternative and this is um, an exercise I did with um, the coaches this week um, just trying to get to know them better as athletes but also as professionals and um, and I think it was really helpful so I thought I would do it with you guys in terms of, say we go back on the 12th of April or the 29th of March into the park and um, you say, this is new gym year, new me, okay? My goal is to dot, dot, dot. That is brilliant. Write that down, have that in the back of your mind. But the thing that you need to fall in love with, apart from that goal, is the processes, OK, so have the goal as if you can imagine you're stood on the top of a hill and you can see a road in front of you and and you can see the city in the distance. The city is your goal. OK, but if you just start walking, you know what a straight line can look really short, but on the way to it can feel really super long. So. What I want to do with you is to make sure that you've got milestones that you can see along the way to give you hope, to give you a sense of achievement, to make sure that is, it is sustainable. And so what um, I like to do is share with you is this idea of creating these milestones and falling in love with the process of having the goal. And if that doesn't work for you, the other mindset we can take is actually just loving um, changing the language of the goal too. So for example, like you, I started CrossFit thinking I want to achieve, um, I, well, I think I, why did I start? Oh, I was just bored. But the reason why I started, like for example, I did spinning before CrossFit was I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to just be a better looking human, I think. Um, and then, you know, that happened. And then I was like, well, I can't stop. So you know, I did lose weight with spinning because it's just pure cardio. And then I was like, well, I can't just stop now that I've lost weight. Now I need to do something else. And that's what eventually why, when I found CrossFit after a long time of not wanting to do it. So um, what we, we need to do rather is come up with either milestones, three or four milestones along the way to our goal or change the language. So let me try and make that as obvious as possible. Can you guys hear me? Can you just type in the chat if you can hear me and make sure it's not something going on my side? Okay, brilliant, thanks Vic. So what, for example, I mean by this is, say, let's take a really um, solid example. For you, you want to achieve a muscle up or a pull up or have a six pack, okay? Fine with those goals, absolutely great goals. That's your city that you can see in the distance. First and foremost, I need you to have a think about that because once you achieve that muscle up, that six pack, that, what was the other one? Pull up, what then, you know? So is that really your goal um, or is it a milestone? Okay, so that's the first thing you can think about. And if it is your goal, you need to have that in the back of your mind, but you need to have it written down that in order to get your muscle up or your pull up you need to be having milestones and make them as small as and as little chunks as possible so for example the first milestone would be every single day that i come into the gym i'm going to do three negative pull-ups i think i've told that to you guys so many times um and, and because they're small muscles you need to do it consistently so your first goal is consistency i'm going to make sure my first milestone I'm going to make sure that I do that every single time. And once I've nailed that and I've enjoyed, like I've enjoyed that, I'm going to go to the next milestone. And it gets to a point where you fall in love with these little processes so much that by the time you get to the city, you just love it so much that you just keep going. OK, it's not this holy grail that you get and then you're just dis disappointed. OK, so say so that's a very practical one for me, um, for example, my goal in life is to um, what I've wanted to do since I left South Africa is I want to go back and open this charity, this sports charity in South Africa. That's my big city that I can see. It's a literal city as well. But anyway, 
Um, so, but you know, if I woke up every day and be like, oh, well, I'm not in South Africa, I'm not, you know, that just leads to crappy thoughts and negative emotions. Whereas if every day I'm working towards um, building the, the foundations of the charity or working on my um, connections with other people that have charities and stuff like that, these are little milestones that I can achieve that makes me feel, feel great. And, 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 and milestones should leave you with um, ideas of I can dot, 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 um, you know, so that you're not waking up every day saying I'm not at my goal. I haven't lost weight. I don't have a muscle up or a pull up. The amount of times I've heard that I can't do a pull up and I've been doing CrossFit for three years. You know, there is there's I really believe that if we're going to do this for the rest of our life, we have to enjoy it. And if you're going to wake up every day and focus on the things that you can't do, it's just going to make that city feel further away. So we need to focus on the things that we can do and make them tangible, make them be able to write down, put it on a, a whiteboard in your room or share it with everyone at the gym. And that will definitely help you. Um, so, for example, I've always had goals in the gym and then I had kids. And then my body got wrecked by them and I had to basically ditch the goals and it and it killed me inside. I went from being, I want to be fitter, I want to be stronger, I want to be a good gymnast, to then suddenly I can't do gymnastics, I can't run without peeing. Um, and you know, all this different stuff, you know. And so I had to change my thought because if I completely just kept that in the back of my mind of I want to I can't run I can't do gymnastics I can't do that I would have just given up and I can't give up because I need to do fitness for the rest of my life in order to be a great great granny okay or whatever um so I changed my goal. So instead of my goal is going to be to be able to do a muscle up or a pull up, I changed my goal to, I'm reading it because I write it down every day, an exciting level of fitness. So that is my goal. And I love that goal because every day I can achieve it, but I'm also not haven't achieved it tomorrow yet. So it's something that renews every single day. And what I mean by an exciting level of fitness is that it, Every day I finish a workout, I'm like, hmm, I feel good. Or, oh, I smashed that. You know, just making sure that, that I am pushing myself, but also that I'm just enjoying it. So that is what I would, in terms of changing your language, that I would love to um, try and um, encourage you guys to do. Try and um, think about your goal. How can I word that better so that I can um, wake up every day and be excited to achieve it rather than focusing on what you can't do, focus on loving the process. Okay. So my loving the process is waking up every day and being excited about fitness. And I don't wake up every day wanting to work out, but when I remind myself of that goal and be like, oh, like oh my word I could I've got the opportunity today to get like one percent or even 0.1 percent fitter than I was yesterday then I'm like okay what can I do about this and then I start to be like okay you, you know what I'm not up for a class today I'm not looking at anyone on zoom they do my head in whatever you know quote quote um so what can I do all right well Instead of doing nothing today, I could just literally do 10 burpees and that my heart rate's going to go up. I know I'm going to be out of breath and I might feel better afterwards and I might be then inspired to do something else. You know, so there's going to be days where you wake up and you're going to need to do the bare minimum. What did I, what did I, do I call it? The minimum viable effort. What is the smallest amount of work that I can do today that is going to help me progress? Okay. And remember, lots of 1% progressions equals 100% quicker than 100 days. I'll let you work that one out. But what can I do today? What is within me today to be have an exciting level of fitness? Okay. And then you'll wake up one day and you'll be like, come on, I remember what Sam said, I need to go out and do instead of run a mile, I need to go and do some hill sprints or some stair climbs, you know, and you'll, you'll wake up and you'll have those days where you feel more energetic. And you're like, okay, what can I do today? But do not wake up thinking to yourself, I am um, not, I'm, you know, I'm so far away, there is absolutely no point. One step is better than zero steps. 
you know, there's no reason why you have to get to 100 in tens, you need to get to 100 in ones, okay? So changing that mindset of, um, of I need to achieve this, you don't. But the one thing I want people to learn from, um, you know, in CrossFit and stuff like that, is um, that it is, it sounds corny or you know even fitness it is a way of life it's not something you have it's something that you no it's not something that you do it's something that you have okay it's a gift that you've been given you're able to go up and down the stairs so can you improve that every single day okay so i don't think um i think something's happened with nat but luckily she's ours so um i can get her back on another day um, but yeah, any questions, let me know in the chat. But otherwise, I'm happy to wind this up and let you guys get on with your day. Um, I hope that made some sense to you um, in terms of don't be obsessed with the huge big goals, but just try and think about the tiny little goals. And if any of you guys do have a goal like a pull up or um, anything, even weight loss, you know, that was you can definitely message me you can definitely message any coach and say what can I do today to improve on that pull-up for example like I've said so many times especially with girls the holy grail is pull-ups every single day every time you approach the gym go straight to the rig and do three negative pull-ups it won't make you sore it won't make you feel stronger but you will be getting stronger every day and um, that's how I got my first pull up. My coach told me to do um, rope climbs. He told me to do one rope climb every day. And that pulling there of the rope into my chest built my lats, my triceps, my biceps and my back. And then one day I jumped onto the rig and I could just do a pull up. It was the weirdest thing. You know, some call it science, but I call it magic. So <laughs> I really hope that this has been helpful to you guys. Um, thanks so much enjoy your run hazel thank you vicky thanks tash awesome yes michelle go for the small wins girl awesome um shane i'm a big advocate of positive positive growth mindset we train it at work to help with resilience oh i love that come on yeah fall in love with the process totally take that totally and love the whole idea of falling in love with the process definitely this is what we've got to do we've got to learn to love crossfit if that's what you want to do or love um running but running little chunks and this is what i always say to people is if you're going to choose a new sport like crossfit get to know it like find understand that all the little bits that make it what it is and you'll be able to um grow more you know there's people that do their level ones their crossfit level ones not because they want to coach just because they want to understand crossfit more so you could be that person and i definitely think that you'll see it reflected in your training you'll understand for why i'm asking you to get your butt below parallel you'll be like oh that's because that uses glutes and you know and that type of stuff so learn your craft and that will help you to love your craft. And you're going to have to love your craft if you're going to do it until your life final days. All right, then, guys. I absolutely love all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for watching back if you're watching on YouTube. I hope you have a great weekend in the sun. Send me your selfies of your sunbathing underneath your duvets, which is what I'll be doing. And, um, yeah, have a great week and stay in touch message me your actually all of you message me your goals now all right see you later bye